Um, I've, I'm a Jersey person. I left the island um, beginning of this year. I actually moved to the Isle of Man. Uh, so I know what's going on over there as well. Um, I was a jury member. Um, uh, the, the paper came through my letterbox um, and I was going through a very difficult time, a uh, family member dying. Um, anyway, to cut a long story short, on the 11th hour I applied and I was accepted. Within uh, half an hour of the first meeting that we had, it was very clear to me that there was a majority who, who had come on to the jury with one intention, and that was to pass this law. So be under no illusion whatsoever. Um, I used to do debates in the sixth form at school, and I'm absolutely shocked and appalled um, how it's roller coasted. Um, the evidence was excellent on both sides but it was overwhelming not to pass this law. But when you've made up your mind that you're gonna do something, I think there's actually you know, scientific evidence that it's very difficult then to dissuade someone. Um, I carry a heavy burden because I was distraught and shocked at, and I'm only talking about a small percentage, um, I can only describe it as coldness, really. They even wanted to include children. They even wanted to include children. Definitely depressed people. Um, I think I completely lost it over the children part. And, um, and for that reason, they decided to withhold it. But they do want to push it further down the line, so don't be under any illusion. There's states members here. Um, I'm very disappointed with you, not maybe you personally, whoever's here. Um, I wrote a letter to every single states member after the jury. I didn't get a single reply. I didn't even get an acknowledgement. But my letter did go to Westminster. Um, when I spoke to, um, all of this happened during COVID, so this was also made it very difficult. Um, but when I event, I mean, I was, uh, anyone who thinks there's safeguarding measures over here, they're not. In my experience, they were zero. And, um, and my loved one is dead because of the capacity 2018 law. So, and you want to bring in something like this. The, na that, the naivety is beggar's belief. Um, what I would say is um, I spoke to um, the local politician and I said, you know, you didn't even have the decency to acknowledge my letter. And this was a while later. And he said, well, how did you send it? And I said, I sent it. Um, I phoned up the state's office and they told me the email to use and it would be sent to all of you. And he said, oh, you didn't use that. It doesn't work. And they want to pass a law deciding who lives and who dies. Thank you. Uh, and and I, uh, what I would say to everyone, there are states members who are hell-bent on passing this law. There are a group of people who are hell-bent on passing this law. It is up to the individuals, the people, who have a chance to change this. All the evidence is there. Do your research. We've had excellent talks this evening. Other, other things that are available to you, do not pour, pass this law, because there will be blood yeah. on uh, whoever, yes. there will be. I'm sorry, I'm saying it as it is. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. And just one final question from the gentleman here, please. Thank you. Um, it's not really a question, it's more of a point. Our daughter was born with a unique genetic condition, which meant that she was severely disabled. The doctors couldn't give us any prognosis or any life expectancy. Um, we had 25 fabulous years with her. 
Um, but every time she went into hospital, even though um, we said no to DNR, do not resuscitate, we were pressured every single time to put DNR onto her notes. My wife was woken up at three o'clock one morning because the doctor said, oh, you haven't got DNR on the notes and I see your daughter's in a wheelchair. So she must be disabled and she can't have quality of life. So my concern was always, if we put DNR on her notes, would her life have been ended? And what will happen in the future? We're saying people with only with capacity, but your 25-year-old in a wheelchair, cannot talk, talk, cannot walk, cannot feed herself, somebody will say, she's got no quality of life, without knowing her quality of life. And I know there's a lot of people in the room here who knew my daughter, Rachel, and they would tell you she had a great quality of life. Thank you.